The White House said Thursday it has warned Iran against any retaliatory attack on Israel. An Israeli strike last week on the country's consulate in Syria killed several senior Iranian commanders. Iran's supreme leader said the attack in Damascus was equivalent to an attack on Iran itself. U.S. and Israeli officials are now preparing for Iran to respond, and despite differences over the handling of Gaza, President Biden has promised Israel ironclad, that's his word, support against Tehran. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin joins me now from the Pentagon. David, when, when w w do we have any sense of what this attack could look like, when it might come? Right now, John, U.S. intelligence is monitoring Iran as it makes uh, preparations for a major drone and missile attack against Israel that could come uh, really at any time, perhaps within the uh, next 24 hours. And by preparations, I mean uh, moving uh, missiles from out of their storage sites into launch position and putting air defenses on high alert in anticipation of an Israeli counterstrike. Now, Iran has said that that attack on the, their consulate in Syria was uh, the same thing as an attack on uh, their soil. So Iran seems uh, determined here to take it, uh, take the war back to Israel. So we are, are really at a high-stakes moment here, uh, perhaps the highest since October 7th. Wow. Okay. Now, does what what kind of capability does Iran have for confrontation with Israel? I mean, could it be a this is going to seem absurd, but a measured strike, or what? Just what what does one expect from an Iranian attack? Iran has about 75 to 100 ballistic missiles that have a great enough range to uh, reach Israel. So that's a uh, a significant threat, because each one of those missiles can carry a 1,000-pound warhead. But you have to remember that Israel has a significant air defense. We've seen them use their Iron Dome system against uh, Hamas rockets, and it has uh, other systems called uh, Arrow and David Sling, which are capable of uh, intercepting longer-range ballistic missiles of the kind that uh, Ir Iran might fire. But that first volley is, is only the start of a battle, because if Iran strikes Israel, Israel is almost certainly going to strike Iran. And Israel, with its uh, American-made F-35 uh, stealth fighters, is uh, certainly likely to come out ahead in an exchange like that. But the bottom line here, John, is nobody wins if this uh, war becomes a, a war between Israel and Iran. And finally, David, on the, on the U.S. question, I mean, so t sort of two questions at once. What, what does the, how does this raise the threat for U.S. forces in the region? And there's always been a challenge with the U.S. in terms of Israeli responses with, when it comes to Iran, fearful that they're going to overshoot and do too much. Um, how does that get managed? Well, you've heard, uh, you've heard the president say that, uh, in this case, U.S. support for Israel is ironclad, and that means uh, providing Israel with the intelligence and the weapons it needs to uh, take on Iran directly, state to state. Now, in Iran's eyes, that, of course, will uh, make uh, the U.S. and all the American uh, troops who are based in the uh, Persian Gulf, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, uh, not Yemen, excuse me, Iraq and Syria, uh, that will make them all legitimate targets, whether Iran uh, decides to go after them directly or whether it uh, uh, prefers to use its proxies against American troops, proxies like uh, Hezbollah and the militias in Iraq and Syria. This, this war we are on the brink of right now could be a major turning point in this whole series of disasters which began on October 7th. A very, very sober moment. David Martin at the Pentagon. Thank you very much, David.